Hi everyone, this is Nathan with ebookreader.com. For this video, I'm going to give you guys a review of the Kindle Fire HD tablet. This is the 7 inch version. And I'm also going to go over uh, some of the tips and tricks that I posted about uh, yesterday in this 40 tips and tricks post for the Kindle Fire HD. Um, you can find this here on my uh, website, the ebook reader blog. And so uh, I wanted to go over a few of these, and then I also wanted to go over the review. Uh, so all the, a lot of the uh, apps that I'm talking about, they'll be linked to in this review, like the Adobe Flash Player um, and some file manager and all this stuff, Google Maps. So the links to all that stuff is in the, in this post if you wanted to download that on your Kindle Fire HD. So let me go ahead and give you a tour of the interface. It's largely the same as it was with the uh, original Kindle Fire HD. We've got the same kind of carousel set up here on the home screen for all your uh, recent apps and ebooks and everything show up here in this list. And you can scroll through them and then if you want to remove something from the list, you just hold down, uh, long press on it and you get the option for remove from carousel, download, Add to favorites. So if you wanted to add something to favorites, too, you just hit the add to favorites button, and your favorites always are located down here with this little star. So it always pulls up your little favorites icon. So this is kind of a cool way to just jump back and forth between apps, since it doesn't have like a specific uh, uh, like a quick apps list. You can just use this to jump back and forth between apps. Uh, so it's kind of the same deal. As you can tell, the speakers are very loud. That's one of the uh, definite strong points on the HD. It's got these uh, dual speakers on the back. It's this plastic strip. The back's got this sort of uh, soft coating, which is kind of nice, but it's easily scratch prone. Down here on the bottom, there's a uh, micro HDMI port, so you can connect it to the TV. I tried that out, and it does work well. And then we've also got the micro, micro USB port. And then on the front, we've got the, um, we've got the camera right there. There's this front-facing camera. Uh, they didn't give us a specific app to work the camera. I guess they just expect us to use the camera for um, video chat. But uh, if we want to, we can download these different apps that have a camera option. So I downloaded this one, PicShop Lite. This is actually the uh, free version. Uh, both versions will work. So what you do is you load this up, and then you see this little icon down here. That's the little icon you tap, and then you hit camera, and that will, in fact, uh, launch the camera. So you've got the different zooming options right here, and we've got a few different settings in there. Um, I mean, it's not a very good camera as you would expect, but uh, um, you can do take can take pictures with it here, and there are a few different uh, settings, like I said. So then that will get saved in a photo gallery. So as you can see, when we're dealing with the tablet in landscape mode, uh, the apps, are, the icons are really huge here, and on the carousel we don't have that lower item. So when you're in portrait mode, you have the recommended apps sections right here. So whenever you're on an app, you get like the recommended apps. Whenever you're on a book, you get recommended. Uh, books down here. Uh, side loaded stuff doesn't show anything. Um, and like audiobooks doesn't show anything, but otherwise, yeah, it's going to show uh, the recommended apps down here. So, the way Amazon has this set up is we have uh, your carousel right here, and then your favorites right here, and then on the home screen, you've got this list, all these sub menus. So, we can hit the shop icon, and then you can take it uh, to this uh, digital storefront here, and then we can uh, just shop for your stuff through here, obviously. And then we've got the other section, subsections in here. So, the game subsection is actually a new one. Um, and it goes ahead and, and lists all the game apps you have on your device. And we can also um, shoot, see what's on the cloud. And see, as you can see, it shows some uh, stats for certain apps. So back in the app section, um, it sorts everything by what you've got on your device and your cloud. Like I said earlier, you can go ahead and install apps from the Amazon App Store and apps from the outside the Amazon App Store. What you need to do to install uh, apps from outside the App Store, it's called... Uh, side loading, you got to go into actually don't go there. You go to device, and then you've got to turn on um, allow installation of uh, un apps from unknown sources right there. And then once you do that, you can install apps from alternate websites. I have a link, uh, some alternate app stores in that uh, tips and tricks post. And then with that, you can download some other apps. So like uh, I side loaded some different apps using that, like uh, the Adobe Flash Player. So uh, can Amazon's not going to be supporting Flash Player on any of their devices anymore. But uh, one way to get around that is you can load in the Dolphin browser, um, and then you can get that other Flash that I was uh, that Flash app, uh, and it's mentioned in the tips and tricks post for the download. You can install that, and then uh, a Flash will go ahead and work. Then we have big dreams. One is for a clean domestic energy future. Natural gas is already saving us money, producing cleaner electricity, putting us to work here in America. Returning to the issue that has driven his campaign. Okay, so here's a look at uh, Flash Player in action. It's time for a president who's committed to...
Cutting spending and balance in the budget. And I know how to do that. I've done it before. Okay, okay, okay. That's way too much politics for this video review. Let's go ahead and move on to something else. So one thing to watch out for with the uh, apps at Amazon is they do give a free app, a uh, prepaid app away every day. So it's a good idea to come in here and load this up and see uh, what they've got available. So right now it's down the hatch. It's usually a game like 90% of the time. Uh, so that's always a good thing to check on. You can get loaded with free apps because uh, I've been doing, I used to do that. Actually, I don't get them anymore because I just like never use them. But I have like a gazillion apps on here because I used to get the free apps, the free app every day. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's mostly games. <clears throat> But uh, you'll get a really good app once in a while. Like I got the free Office Suite uh, through there one time. I got a couple other really good apps. So they do give away a really good app uh, once in a while, especially holidays. So I definitely want to check it on holidays. They usually have a really nice app they give away for free. Okay, so the books list, it's sort of just the same deal as your uh, apps list. You got all your cloud uh, listed on one side. And once you got loaded on your device on the other side, uh, one thing I really wish Amazon would add to this, so I have all these gazillion books, I don't really know what many of them are. <clears throat> it would be nice to be able to hold down on this and get a description uh, for the book, but we don't have anything like that. If you want to know what the book is, uh, what the book's about, whatever, you have to hit the store, type in the title into the search bar up here, and then hit enter. So it's kind of a, a annoying process if you want to uh, try to figure out what book out of your collection you want to read. So like I said, we've got all our subsections up here. I've showed you all those. We've got the music subsection. So what you can do with Amazon's cloud is you can go ahead and load all your music onto here if you want. I never bothered with it, but you can do that. You get free 250 free songs, or you got to pay the premium package for uh, anything up to 250,000 songs. So we, uh, you do have a lot of options for that. Uh, I just usually listen to Pandora. That's one really good option for uh, streaming music. Um, that's available in the Amazon App Store. Uh, so as far as the videos go, of course, we've got Amazon's videos. Uh, you can sideload videos. Uh, the format support isn't the greatest. What you're going to want to do is download a sideload app called uh, MX Video Player. That's probably going to help uh, with your uh, video playing of sideloaded videos because uh, it supports a lot more formats than like the Amazon's uh, base app supports. So with the Kindle videos, you can save them on, you can stream them online, or you can save them to view offline. With the exception of the Prime videos, those are only for uh, streaming, so you can't actually download those. I don't believe. We've got the newsstand sections and the audiobooks and the web, photos, docs, and offers. So uh, the thing about these new Kindle tablets is they all come with special offers. So whenever you turn it off and turn it back on again, you've got an advertisement on the lock screen. Uh, you can also view all those advertisements over here in the offers section. Uh, they're not all bad. Uh, sometimes they're pretty good, like this one right here. Um, <clears throat> get $5 uh, to spend on selected titles in the Amazon Instant Video Store. So, I mean, you basically just get five free bucks. So... Uh, the special offers aren't so bad at all um, sometimes. It just it sort of depends on your nature if you get annoyed by these kinds of things. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep them on there because I don't really find them too annoying. Uh, you can pay Amazon 15 bucks to get rid of them. The very first day I had this tablet, there was a really annoying ad here in the left corner that said, uh, get Harry Potter ebooks with Amazon Prime, and I must have hit that thing like all the time accidentally, like half a dozen times. I was really annoyed with that ad, but after the first day, it's never been there again, so I guess they just decided to get rid of it. Uh, if that ever comes back, I will be annoyed, but otherwise, I really don't mind the... Uh, lock screen as okay so why don't I go ahead and show you guys how ebooks work on the Kindle Fire HD we've got some new features and one of the main new features is called whisper sync for voice so the other day I posted about on my blog a way to get 22 free Kindle ebooks and audiobooks through audible and it's a really really good deal you guys should check that out I don't know how long it's gonna last but while it does last uh, we get these uh, public domain titles and then we have uh, professionally narrated uh, audiobooks with them and uh, audiobooks are like 15 to 25 bucks each and there's 22 of them so uh, at a free uh, promotion, that's a pretty good deal. So, one of those two passengers. So, with the narration, Both we've got the different speeds. Either of these two passengers. Both were so wrapped up, and the night was so dark. Uh, both were so. Is what he wants. Does he resemble either of these two passengers? Suppose. Look again upon the prisoner. Supposing him. So, as you can see, it does the highlighting as it goes, were. and you can see. Is there anything in his box? So, you can listen to the audiobook on other devices, and then come back to the book, and it will sync where you left off on the audiobook. Uh, to the ebook, so uh, they've got that new feature here where it syncs the ebooks and audiobooks together. It's called Whisper Sync for Voice. So in here we've got the different font sizes as usual. We've got the different background colors. We've got the different margin settings and the different font types. All right, so all the other Kindle features apply. You know, you got the uh, you hold down on a word, you get the options for. <laughs> Uh, the dictionary comes up when you get the options for notes, highlights, sharing. So as far as 
the highlights go, you can just move the little arrows icons, they work really easy on this guy. Um, we've also got the options to search, uh, search Wikipedia and search the web when you have a single word highlighted. So we can just uh, open up the web browser. So the uh, Silk web browser is not reacting right now, what's wrong with you? There we go. So the Silk web browser is a pretty nice web browser actually. Uh, there's been some complaints about it. Uh, I think it's a pretty nice web browser. Uh, we've got the different options when you click down on a link. you got the open and background. Uh, we've got some different settings in here. You've got the copy and paste. If you wanted to copy something, same goes with the images. We've got the full screen. I really like the full screen so you can get really big. you got the different tabs up there. Oh, what's really cool is the uh, reading mode. You hit this little glasses right here and it takes the page and reformats it into like an ebook type style where you can adjust the different font types. So that's a really cool uh, feature actually. I'm pretty uh, fond of the uh, little reading app right there as far as that goes. I have had some issues with this web browser freezing up on me though. Uh, I've actually had that happen three times already so uh, that's the one annoying thing about this browser is it will freeze up. It just sort of like hangs and it won't do anything. What you're going to want to do with, in that case is you come into more you come into applications and then you find your application uh, on this list here. This goes for any application that's giving you troubles. So like if the web browser is freezing up on you, you just come in here, find Silk um, right there and then you just go in and hit uh, for stop and then that will go ahead and reset it so that it's actually working again or you can just restart your device. Uh, as you can see when, after you visit the web browser or whatever, it adds a little icon to your home screen. I usually don't like it because it's just kind of ugly looking as far as the um, web browser goes so I always get rid of that and we've got your other icons right here what's weird is it always moves the um, audiobook in front because we're using that with that ebook one thing I've also noticed is it always adds that up here one of those two passengers I cannot... your notifications bar right here I don't really like that I, there's like I haven't found a way to get rid of that at all if I force stop the app it doesn't get rid of it the only way I've found to get rid of it is if I actually restart the device so I do get kind of annoyed with that as you can see I've got this battery status right here so this is one of the uh, recommended apps I'd recommend installing. Uh, this is called uh, G-SAM Battery Monitor. Uh, so you can get to just see what uh, what is using the most uh, app usage, what is using the most battery usage. You can check out uh, what apps are using the most battery. Uh, <clears throat> but I like what I like most about it, obviously, is that you can just pull down your thing right here and it tells you exactly if battery percentage 43%. Because otherwise you got to go a couple of taps into the settings menu just to get the percentage of the battery left so I do like that app just to have that option on there so one of the apps that I so side loaded onto here was the Google Maps app so not like all the features are gonna work because uh, it's not set up for it it's just, just side loaded so it doesn't have like latitude and stuff so if you hit that it's just gonna force stop the app but for the most part uh, most of the features seem to be working the different layers uh, we've got different uh, options for uh, like if I installed the uh, Street View, that works, and then that, or the uh, directions, that type of stuff works. So for the most part, it works. Satellite View, that kind of thing, works. Some of the other apps I sideloaded were YouTube. So uh, the Kindle Fire doesn't exactly come with a, U a YouTube app. It just directs you to the YouTube website. So uh, this does actually work pretty well. So one of the other apps that I would highly recommend is ES File Explorer. It's a file management app. Uh, let me show you a cool thing. That if you uh, download, like, say, an ebook or a PDF with a web browser and you want it to show up on your carousel or in your documents list, what you're going to need to do is go in here to the Downloads folder, pick whatever it is that you downloaded, and then just uh, long press on it. So, like, if it's an ebook, you just long press, and then you type copy, and then you go ahead and move that over. Uh, we need to go back. So we can go back up one level and we need to move it to the documents folder. So if you move anything to your documents folder as far as PDFs and mobile files for Kindle books, uh, we can go ahead and just do like that. And when we go to the home screen, you got to leave the home screen. So you can see uh, it does kind of lag sometimes when you like hit on a new icon. It does take it a few seconds to load. Otherwise, it's a pretty zippy as far as the 1.2 gigahertz processor goes. Uh, so as you can see, that I went ahead and added that. Uh, book that I downloaded with the web browser to the home screen here and it also adds it to your personal documents list. So we've got that right there. So as far as the recent apps list goes you can actually reorganize this stuff if you want. You just hold down and you can move it around if you want to reorganize. You can add uh, as much stuff as you want to this so I just happen to have an even number that fits here but if you have more you can scroll up and down.
So as far as performance and uh, the screen, it just uh, looks really good even at strong viewing angles. You can see right here, I mean, it's super clear screen. I really like the screen. Touchscreen reacts well. And it is generally fast and responsive, like I said earlier. Sometimes you like hit something up here and it will take it a few seconds to launch. Uh, so it's not as super fast as like other tablets on the market. But it is pretty zippy as far as that goes. I mean, you can scroll through all this really super fast and it doesn't have any problems with that as far as uh, keeping up. So like if I go through my massive apps list, um, it does keep up generally once it's loaded. As you can see, it slows up once we get to the bottom there. But then once it gets all the images loaded, it's actually quite fast. So I wanted to go ahead and show you guys uh, what text-to-speech sounds like. Since this book doesn't have the audiobook section, we can go ahead and demo that pretty easily. At yes. last, saturated with the news of the day, I tossed them all aside and lay listless, watching the huge crest and monogram upon the envelope upon the table and wondering lazily who my friend's noble correspondent could be. Here is a very fashionable epistle. So I the voice is actually not entered. bad. There's different Your speed adjustments right here. morning letters, if I remember right. We're from a fishmonger. Yes, yes, my correspondent has her. This looks like one of those unwell. He broke the seal and glanced over the contents. So one thing about the Amazon app stores, they don't let uh, any EPUB e-reading apps show up in the uh, list, even though they have some. So what you can do is you can sideload your EPUB reader apps. I went ahead and uh, sideloaded the Overdrive Media Console. You can just go to the Overdrive's website and get that if you want. And you can get library books through that app. You can also just get library books through your Kindle and read them through your Kindle app. So it just sort of depends which way you want to go with that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the Aldeco app, which I loaded on here. I sideloaded it and downloaded a book, and it seems to be working okay. What I like about that is you can just adjust the brightness right there on the side. It's got all the different text adjusting options. Let me go ahead and show you an aspect of the screen. Uh, the HD screen is really, really nice on the Kindle H Kindle Fire. I haven't mentioned it much yet, but uh, it is really, really nice. The 1080 by 800 resolution. Um, it's a very fine detail. Even with this really tiny text down here, you can actually read it just as clearly as can be. So even I go all the way down to the super smallest text here. I can actually still barely read it. That's how clear the screen is. Uh, there's actually one more setting, I think. A couple more. It just sort of depends on the book. This one can't quite read at the smallest setting, but at the second smallest set setting, I can read it. That's how clear the screen is because the pixels, there's so many pixels, it just doesn't get pixelated even with that super small text. It just looks really good, really clear, even at uh, sharp viewing angles. I mean, the uh, viewing angles on it are really, really good. So this video is starting to drag on, guys. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up right here. Uh, check out the ebookreader.com. Like I said, I've got that uh, 40 tips and tricks for the Kindle Fire HD post, and I'll also be posting an in-depth review here shortly. I already posted a first impressions post if you wanted to read that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review. Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe if you like my videos, and have a good day.